Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden and others honored two giants of aerospace history at a ceremony Tuesday celebrating the renaming of Dryden Flight Research Center to Armstrong Flight Research Center after the late Neil Armstrong, the first person to set foot on the moon, and a former research test pilot at the center. At the same time, the name of Hugh Dryden, who served as NASA's first deputy administrator, lives on as the namesake of the center's aeronautical test range. The event featured the singing of the national anthem by Neil Armstrong's granddaughter, Kaylee, and a low-level flyover of an F-A-18. On Tuesday, International Space Station Expedition 39 Commander Koichi Wakata of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, NASA flight engineer Rick Mastracchio, and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Turin strapped into a Soyuz spacecraft and hours later landed safely in Kazakhstan. New station commander Steve Swanson of NASA and his Expedition 40 crewmates now are awaiting the arrival of NASA's Reed Wiseman and the rest of Expedition 40. They are in Russia preparing for their launch to the ISS later this month. During a recent underwater exercise at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab near Johnson Space Center, astronauts Stan Love and Steve Bowen tested spacesuits, tools, and techniques NASA is developing for a human mission to an asteroid in the 2020s. This is part of a series of evaluations to help determine what tools will be needed for the mission, which will help advance a number of technologies NASA needs to send astronauts to Mars in the 2030s. A new study by NASA and the University of California, Irvine, indicates a rapidly melting section of the West Antarctic ice sheet appears to be in an irreversible state of decline, with nothing to stop the entire glacial basin from melting into the sea. These glaciers contain enough ice to raise global sea level by four feet in the coming century and are melting faster than most scientists had expected. During a visit to Goddard Space Flight Center on Monday, Administrator Bolden visited the integration and test facility where the four spacecraft for NASA's magnetospheric multiscale mission are being tested. Following its targeted launch next year, MMS will orbit Earth to explore the mystery of magnetic reconnection, a fundamental process that occurs throughout the universe during which magnetic fields connect and disconnect to explosively release energy. Recent observations by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope show Jupiter's trademark Great Red Spot, a swirling anticyclonic storm larger than Earth, has shrunk to its smallest size ever measured. The new Hubble data indicate the storm currently is about 10,250 miles across, compared to 14,500 miles when measured by NASA's Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1979. Astronomers have followed its downsizing since the 1930s and think the Great Red Spot is being altered by the swirling motions of small eddies feeding into it. Engineers at Langley Research Center conducted a 10-foot vertical drop test with a section of a former marine helicopter outfitted with a composite subfloor. The composite material absorbed enough energy from the impact to reduce simulated injury to two crash test dummies on board. The composite subfloor will be used in a full-scale helicopter crash test later this year. Marshall Space Flight Center is one of 10 NASA centers that may eventually participate in a new initiative called Technology Transfer University, or T2U. The program seeks feedback from MBA students about how NASA technology could be spun off for use in commercial industry. NASA's Technology Transfer Program hopes the initiative inspires students to form companies that grow the U.S. economy by developing new or improved commercial products using licensed, patented NASA technologies. NASA's Michoud Assembly Facility was honored by the Louisiana State Legislature during the recent NASA Louisiana Aerospace Day 2014 events in Baton Rouge. The facility's Deputy Director Michael Kennard and astronaut Jeanette Epps attended the festivities. Proclamations in the state's House and Senate recognized Michoud's critical roles in the nation's space history, in America's space exploration future, and in Louisiana's economy and cultural life. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov twan.